What's up YouTube, I'm Derek Elliott. I'm a 3D animator and designer and in the sneak peek lesson we're gonna share today, I'm gonna show you how you can start leveling up your animation skills in Blender. Ready to go? Let's get started. a little bit of work with armatures today. Now this is something popular with character animators, but there's a lot of ways you can use it with product animation as well. In this case, I'm gonna be using armatures to open the lid on a box model that I have prepared. So we're gonna see now with a few objects that I've already prepared ahead of time. In this case, we're looking at a box and inside the box, if we look at wireframe, we actually have a few different skincare models that we're gonna be working with. Now, the box is a pretty simple object. It's just plain. We have a solidify modifier on it, as well as a bevel modifier. But besides that, we're just working with different plain objects. This is a very simple object that you could build easily with very simple modeling skills. So what I wanna do now is open this box up. And the way I'm gonna do that is by using armatures. So if we didn't have armatures, if these were separate objects, we could just animate the rotation, for example. But in this case, I wanna use armatures so that this stays as one object and we're deforming the object. So I wanna decide where I want this bend to start. And in my case, I want it to be right along this back seam here. We're not gonna be moving any of the rest of this object, just this lid. So I wanna make sure my cursor is selected right there. If yours is not, you can just select that edge, press Shift S and snap your cursor to selected. Then what I'm gonna do is press Shift A and add in an armature. And that'll create this large object right here. And this is a bone. There's two parts to this bone. This is the sort of root of the bone and this is the other end of that bone. So now if I go into my side view and tab into edit mode on the bone object, I can just now move this into place where I want that next bone to start. So we're gonna have two bones here. We're gonna have one opening the main flap of the box, and then we're gonna just have another bone controlling sort of that little flap on the edge. So in wireframe view, I'm just gonna move this to right about where that seam is. And it's a little bit difficult to see, but we have our box top coming over right here, and then it's kind of tucked in right in this area. So I'm gonna get that positioned right around where that next corner is. So that's looking good. So now what I'll do back in edit mode is with this end selected, I wanna press E and Z and just extrude down until we have another bone. So now we have two very simple bones. Now, if you wanna be sure you can see your bones through things, there's a lot of options with bones in the way that they're displayed in the viewport. So in this object data properties tab on a bone, we have a few options here. If we want, we can press that bone. We can select this bone to be in front. So now matter, no matter which way our object is oriented, we'll always be able to see that bone. So that's helpful for when we're selecting them and doing a little bit of animation here in the future. So now what I need to do is parent this box object to the armature bone object so that we can actually start to create that animation. These are linked together. You can think of armatures kind of like a skeleton. So right now we have a skeleton and we have the body object that we want to parent the skeleton to, but we need to actually attach them together. And the way we're going to do that is with empty vertex groups. So if we select this box object first and then select our bone next, we can press Control P and we'll have a few different options here that we might not have had before. Because we've got bones in this case, we wanna be doing armature to form. So if you're working with a simple object and you're not too concerned about exactly how it bends, then this automatic weights option is really good because it'll do a good job of sort of selecting what areas it thinks you want a bone to be attached to based on the proximity of the mesh to that bone. But in my case, I wanna have very specific control over what each bone is affecting on the object. And that's gonna be easy for me because this is such a simple object. So I can just assign those once I have the vertex groups. I'm gonna parent this with empty groups. So now if we were to move our bone object, the box object is gonna move with it. But if we were to go into pose mode, for example, and try to move this object around, then it's not gonna move. Now, the way I moved into pose mode really quickly was by pressing control tab. You could also do that up here. But if we now click on our box object, we'll see that we have two bones. So there's a bone and a bone.001. So, so that this is a little bit easier, let's go into edit mode on this bone object and rename this bone. So I'm gonna press F2 and rename that main flap. And then with this one, I'll press F2 and rename that small flap. Now, if we go back into the vertex groups, we can see that those names have been updated. So it's just a little bit easier to understand. What I need to do now is assign which parts of the mesh need to be assigned to those specific bones. So let's tab into edit mode. Let's select this top face, and then let's also select these side faces that I want to also move up with that main flap, and let's hit assign. 
Now if we tab out of edit mode and we go back into our pose mode, we can then rotate this bone. Now this axis is something that's particularly useful for character animators, but I'm gonna just change this to our X, Y, and Z Euler that we're used to. Now if we move this, we can see it's working properly. But of course that other bone is still stuck to it. So what I need to do now is go into the vertex group for that bone and assign those as well. So I'm gonna select the small flat vertex group and then let's make sure if we press select, it's not assigned to anything right now, which it's not. Let's just select that one face and then hit assign. Now if we go back into this bone object and start going into pose mode again with control tab, now we can rotate this and it's gonna move with it. Now it looks like we're actually also moving this object down here. So when I rotate that, I don't want that bottom part of the mesh to, to move. So I'm gonna make sure that this portion of the mesh is not part of that main flap vertex group. So let's select that vertex group and then click select. And it doesn't appear that it is, if we hit select again in vertex mode, but I think what the problem here is, is that the order of modifiers matters, including with armatures. So the armature actually is a modifier in our stack. And if you remember, modifiers work in order. So we need to make sure that our armature is happening first, because with the solidify and the bevel, we're creating all this extra geometry, but our vertex group was very simple. So once that extra geometry is added, it doesn't really know where to put those new vertices in that group. So let's make sure our armature is first. So I need to get in object mode first, then control tab into pose mode. And now I should be able to rotate this and it's working properly. Now we have a little bit of flexing here, but that's okay for our purposes now. We just wanted to have mainly control over this primary part of the object. And now you can see that when we open this, we have a little bit of a reveal going on. And we could also independently adjust this one to create a little bit of extra animation on this particular part of the mesh. So let's quickly add a really simple animation where maybe this starts all the way down. So let's right click and insert a single keyframe on that rotation. And then let's move forward, let's say 60 frames, two seconds. And let's go ahead and make sure we're at 30 frames per second over here in our render properties, our output properties. And then let's move this up to something like that. I wanna move it up just enough so that our objects can sort of pop out of the box. Something like this I think is gonna work great. Let's also add just a little bit of animation to this bone so we have just a little bit more happening. Now I don't want this to fly out quite right here because then it would intersect with our box. So just once that clears, somewhere right around here, I'm gonna insert a keyframe. And then I'll move forward to frame 60 and we can kind of have that fly back a little bit. So let's insert another keyframe. Now just so we can play this back really quickly, let's set our total timeline to only be 60 frames and we can see that box opening animation happening. So what we did today was a really simple use case of using armatures to open a box. Now armatures are a really powerful tool in animation, particularly if you're doing character animation, but if I'm being honest, I don't use them that much for things besides the simple use case we did here today. But the steps are very similar. You basically create a skeleton for the object you want to add an armature to, then you assign what parts of the mesh move with which bones, and then you can animate the bones to create whatever effect you're going for. You've made it to the end. I'm so proud of you. Now it's time to join me for the full class on Skillshare where I'll cover animation techniques in Blender. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.